And we're back talking horse racing, horsepower, PSN from the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thoroughbred horse racing coverage. John Hardoon from the Rags and Sheets joining me as always. How's it going, John? Good, Greg. How are you? I'm doing better, of course. Uh, another week with electricity and with the uh, internet, even though this internet sucks. So if we have any technical difficulties, uh, you know who to blame. Uh, so it's going to be a few weeks before we can get the fiber optics going here in our studio. But a hey, show is better than nothing. So we've got Keeneland on our minds once again, John. And speaking of Keeneland, last week, that was a little bit uh, crazy last week. We, we had three races that we handicapped. Of course, we had one on YouTube. That was the Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup. And John, you uh, actually, we, we, we both liked uh, the three. She feels pretty, and boy, did she feels pretty dominate. Uh, well, she was dominating in that race. Yes, yeah, she won pretty easily, and uh, the price actually wasn't too bad if you just wanted to take her. I mean, she won easily. Uh, I don't think we gave out, I didn't give out the exact, or I don't no. know if you did, but no. All right. No, missed on the exact, yeah. but hey, you know what? The uh, Again, like you said, I was surprised too that what was she like, four to one, maybe, or three to one? You sure? I think she went a five to two. Five. Okay. So this again, not all that bad, uh, considering how uh, strong uh, she was. She had already. Uh, uh, she, that's her second Grade One win, too. So. And she won very easily, and she's got a nice future of he ahead of her. She just continues to improve, so that's all good. And then we talked about on Patreon uh, the sixth race. Uh, now your top horse scratched, but you also had the two horses that actually ended up finishing first and second. A four-one exacta. I forgot how much that paid, uh, but hey, a win's a win. Unfortunately, the eight scratched. And then in the ninth, uh, your top horse did not come in, but you had a long shot that you liked in this race. And matter of fact. I'm going to pop that on the screen right here from last week's show. So uh, let's take a listen to what we talk, what you talked about last week. You know, listen, you, missed, you left out a horse that I think you should talk about, and that's uh, surface. To me, because if you look at the sheet, he really hasn't. the last two races not so good no it looks like he went bad too you know listen you missed you left out a horse that i think you should talk about and that's uh surface to air the 12 horse who will be every bit of 30 to 1 here but he's a little interesting to me because if you look at the sheet he really hasn't done anything wrong last year he ran a 17 top towards the end of the year he comes out he was claimed first start this year and he, when he ran the 14. So for his new trainer, he ran an 11 minus, then a 10 minus. Both of those numbers are very good. The 16 that he has two starts back was without Lasix, and it was also a bounce off of the 10. Then last time out, he ran on a grass, and he's not a grass horse. He's obviously a dirt horse. His 10 and 11, three and four starts back were both on the dirt. Back on Lasix today, and 20 to 1 on the morning line. I know it's a, t it's a tough post. But I broke the line down for you, and I broke the sheet down for you, and you could certainly make a case. I wish this horse was drawn inside because I would really be betting out on this horse. But I think he's live in here, and I wouldn't leave him out, certainly in my tries and supers. He's going to be every bit of 30 to 1. Good call, John. That's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting because I was complaining about the post. However, I think there were four late scratches in there, so he moved into the eight post. It was really a pretty good analysis, if I must say so myself. <laughs> yeah. So it worked out well. Listen, the horse went off twenty-four to one. So yeah. people that were paying attention may have used the horse, and I certainly tried to steer you in that direction. The horse that I like best, the Bill Mod horse, was bet down to five to two, and he just did not run a step. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, I, I was going over my bets. And even though I, had, I didn't have a lot of money in my account, I was like, well, this is the last race. And I was like, oh, that's right. John likes that long shot 12. I'll put a couple bucks on him. Boom, winner. Did you? Good yeah, for you. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. 
So there you go. Uh, that is a little recap of what happened last week. And we did Keeneland. We're doing Keeneland again. Here on YouTube, uh, we are going to do a grade three race. And then for our Patreon members, it's going to be the eighth race and the ninth race. So seven, eight, nine, eight and nine on Patreon. The nine is the grade two Raven run. And if you want to know what Patreon's about, and if you're new, just check the link in the description. It's $5 a month to get all of our bonus selections just for $5 a month. No strings attached. You can cancel at any time. If you, for whatever reason, you can't go to Patreon, then please subscribe here on our channel because as soon as we get to 1,000 subscribers, everything is going to be avail available for free here on YouTube. Okay, so let's get started, John. Uh, it's, a, it's a seventh race at Keeneland, seven furlong race. The Grade Three Perryville, three hundred thousand dollar purse. This is for three year olds, and uh, yeah, this is a, a really uh, deep field. We've got uh, twelve horses, and even though there's a there's a couple of short horses, you got the two to one shot Bookham Dano. That's the five. You've got the three a three to one shot Knights Bridge. Uh, and the 10 locked, it's a 7 to 2 shot. Even though you got some really good low, uh, low uh, odds numbers, uh, horses, there is, uh, there's a lot of bargains. There's a lot of nice uh, long shots in the field. So I guess the trick is we got to try to see if we can hit the right favorite maybe with some long shots. Yeah, no question about it. You're right about that. These are some nice horses. There are some improving three-year-olds. It's a 7 for a long race and uh, full field. Uh, so that's the good news. Bookham Dano, the favorite, has really got the most uh, amazing sheet you've ever seen. Uh, we talked about this horse a few times already because we've had him up on the show, and we've actually caught him a few times. We liked him a lot. Well, this horse has never done anything wrong. It's really – he's got an amazing sheet. As a two-year-old, he had a 10 top, and then he came out this year 866. So he's just never gone backwards. His only bad race was the last race he had last year when he was going a mile and he ran the 13. Throw that race out, and every race is better than the previous one. And this train has done a terrific job with this horse. He spaces his races perfectly. He gives him time between races. You know, you're just not going to continue to improve forever. But that being said, to me, he looks pretty strong in this race. Yeah, uh, again, uh, no other horse in this uh, uh, field can touch those two sixes coming in and a string of single digits. So clearly the horse to beat. Let's uh, talk about the other two I mentioned, uh, Some the other two top contenders. Again, book them down to a two-to-one morning line favorite. You've got the three-to-one shot, and that is Knightsbridge. The, the big difference is, is that even though Knightsbridge is pretty similar to book them Dano's first couple of starts this year, ran a nine and ran an eight. But uh, he ran a nine in November and an eight in March. So we haven't seen this horse a lot. Uh, that's, that's, that's the deal right there, is that even though you like those two numbers to start out of the gate for uh, this horse's career, when you compare it just to Bookham Dano, I mean, why would we go with a horse that just doesn't race a lot when Bookham Dano has a lot more experience and even better numbers and the price is pretty similar? Yeah, well, but Knightsbridge is really, I mean, he could run anything. He yeah. ran a nine as a two-year-old first out, and he won that race with trouble. And then he came out as a three-year-old, got Lasix at Gulfstream. The problem with this horse is, where's he been? You know, yeah. he hasn't been out. He doesn't run often, and he's only making his third start. He was last seen back on March 28th, I believe, and uh, he's been away ever since. He could certainly win. Listen, you run a nine as a two-year-old, you're eligible to run anything. But that being said, I, I, I agree with you. It's not like there's such a big price differential. If the three horse was 10 to 1 Knightsbridge, yeah, I would take a shot with him. But he's only a point higher than Bookham Dano, and uh, I think Bookham Dano is better. And then you have uh, the 10, and right off the bat, uh, you have to talk about the fact that Locked, a 7 to 2 shot, is on the outside. Uh, Locked does have a couple of nines. Uh, but so far, we don't know whether or not this is like an up and down kind of horse. Start off with a 13, then a 9, then an 11, then a 9. So, uh, but look, that last 9 was almost a year ago. That was at the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Race. Uh, this was the favorite, matter of fact. The favorite of the Breeders' Cup Juvie Race. Finished third. Uh, does have a win at Keeneland, though. That was the 11 last October. But again, we've got a couple other horses in here that just look a little bit better, plus Locked is on the outside. This looks like a very good horse, but just like you said with the three, where where's Locked been? 
The same problem. He hasn't been out since last year's Breeders' Cup. I mean, he's away almost a year. You know, he's a couple of weeks shy of being away a year. That's the problem with the race. So, you know, and again, locked is not a price. He's seven to two on the morning line. He's going to take money. Knight's Bridge is going to take money. So all that's going to do is hopefully let uh, Bookham Dano's price go up a little bit. Yeah. But again, if a horse like locked one, it would be no surprise. He was very, he had a very strong line as a two-year-old, nine, eleven, nine. He's eligible to come out and run anything. That's the problem with the race. So um, you know, you got to decide what you're doing here. And I just think that I'm going to take the easy way out and go with. Book them, Dano. There are some other interesting yeah. horses in the race. Dilger is listed at 20 to 1 on the morning line. He ran a 10 and a 9 in his last two races. You know, uh, he's getting better. It looks like all of a sudden he's gotten real good in his last couple of races. But he's 20 to 1. At a short price, I would have played him to react. But the fact that he's 20 to 1, you certainly could use him. Even the one horse, Enro or whatever. I mean, he looks like he's stuck on nines, but he's breaking from the rail. He's 12 to 1. You know, if these layoff horses don't come back running, well, then one of these horses will get in the exact. Yeah, a couple of other long shots uh, to go over. Uh, let's see. The four who day. Uh, does have a seven a couple of starts ago came back to the 11 that he ran previous of the seven the only question is was the seven just a one-off or was that the beginning of who day i mean look it's only a three-year-old even though uh this horse has raced a lot uh this season and, and last season but still um you know look at last season's numbers 2015 early this year 12 13 so the last three numbers are 11 7 11 which indicates to me there's a possibility this horse is starting to hit or hit a stride yeah there's nothing wrong with him he's another horse that has a nice line the 11 off the seven is fine he's figured to react off of the seven he did he's coming back off of lasix this week he won that race by the way with a bad number so to me it's what i call reverse buried he looks better on paper than he did on the numbers. You know, he made he won with a backward move. So you lose a lot of value when you play horses like that. Ran second in his only trip to Keeneland. That was a seven furlong race early in April, running at 12. Uh, another long shot. Um, what about good look in justice? This is the six uh, at 20 to one. And if you look at this horse, really dating all the way back to August of last year, this horse has really been straight ahead with the line. The sheet line is really excellent. 23 to 16 to end last year. And then 11, 10, 10, and 8 this year. So I really like the line. But I guess the big thing we don't know about this horse, who's 9 for 9, first or second, all of his races were at Indianapolis. Yeah, and he also got really good this year when he went on Lasix. Uh, he ran the 11 first out this year when going on Lasix for the first time, and he stayed on Lasix ever since. Okay. The problem I have with this horse, and I would never tell anyone not to use a 20 to one shot. If you like a 20 to one shot and a 20 to one shot that has a legitimate chance, you certainly should do it. The problem I had with this horse is he has no real foundation as a two year old. As a two-year-old, the best race he ever ran was a 16, where you have horses like Knight's Bridge, who ran a nine. Um, you know, Lock ran nines as a two-year-old. So those horses have the potential to come out and obviously run much better. But the problem is those horses are going to be bet where this horse may not be bet. And if you wanted to use this horse at a big price, I have no complaints. I mean, I, you know, you could certainly do so. All right. Uh, the seven is Patriot Spirit, a 15 to one shot coming off an eight. Now, this horse has also improved each time out this year, 1917 to start the year. So it looked like, well, yeah, since last year to February, March, nothing's happening. But then, boom, 11 in April, follow that up with an eight. I mean, you could have easily thought about a bounce, but she had, he had enough time between those starts from April to September. Now it's a little bit shorter time, but still coming off an impressive eight. Yeah, but it is a big race. It just and it was also first time Lasix, so it could have been a Lasix pop number. And uh, I would play that horse to react. He's only fifteen to one. You know, again, there are other horses that are just as long or longer that I think have stronger lines. That eight really came out of nowhere. 
I would attribute the eight to first time Lasix. And then the last two horses in the field, uh, you've got Love Me Tender has raised two, has run two 11s in, in two wins. Uh, that's a 30 to one shot. And the 12 Epic Ride is a 20 to one shot. Ran uh, back to back tens before the 19 last time out of Churchill. That was the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and you could draw a line through that race. He was coming off of two tens, then he was asked to go a mile and a quarter. He's been freshened up ever since. So he's got a shot to come back running, and that's what makes it, you know, an yeah. interesting race. But again, most of these horses are a little slower than the faster horses. So let's see what happens. All right. So you, uh, we both going with the five? Yeah, I'm going with the five for sure. And I would use underneath um, the one and Reno, the nine Dilger, and the ten locked. Five with one, nine, ten. Okay, one, nine, and ten. So I'm going to go ahead, then, and I'm going to go with the uh, the one, the four, and the six with the five. So the five with the one, four, six, you're going to go five with the, with the one, nine, and ten. Sounds like a plan. Now we are going to say goodbye to our YouTube viewers once again. If you want to find out what we talk about here with Races 8 and 9 at Keeneland, you got to check it out over on Patreon. The link in the description. Once again, just $5 a month. You get four shows. That's it. Four shows, which totals up to somewhere. Especially, don't forget, even this is Breeders' Cup month. Well, next month is Breeders' Cup month. And that means that even though we're going to be doing a lot, we're going to be giving some uh, race coverage on YouTube a lot uh, for that. We are going to save at least a couple of races for Patreon. Uh, so that's always going to be the case. So anyway, uh, for our YouTube viewers, uh, we're checking out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you don't join us on Patreon. Uh, 